All right, welcome back to the Knives Fast channel, guys. It is time for another review, so say hi to those guys. You can barely see Ren and Stimpy and Powdered Toast Man and Log and TV. And let's get started on the Knives Fast channel, guys. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Now, this is a knife that comes through the Apex Pass Around group from Beyond EDC. Beyond EDC is the company. Uh, there's the model number of the knife. And this is from Beyond EDC's Asymmetrical series. So they have three different kind of levels, sort of like, um, you know, from budget all the way up uh, to, um, you know, premium. And this is the mid-level, uh, Asymmetrical is. Um, and this is pretty cool, guys. This is pretty cool. Now, it comes in that box, um, a nice box and a very nice pouch. So we're going to put these kind of off to the side here, and we're going to focus on on the knife. I got to tell you right off the bat, this is one of the favorite uh, mid-level or any level, uh, gosh, uh, titanium frame locks I've had in my hand in quite some time, guys. This is phenomenal. These made are made in China, and these are currently available at SMKW. Because, And again, you can use my link that's down in the description. The channel gets credit. And uh, again, as I always say, uh, if you use my affiliation code, you don't really get a discount, but I get some money back and I turn that uh, little bit of money around into buying a knife uh, and, uh, you know, reviewing it and giving it away on the channel. I've got one on the way that should be here tomorrow, uh, the very first one. So I'm very excited about that uh, and hope to amp that up into some really cool knives to buy and give away. Now, this is the contact. It's got this sand titanium and uh, it is made in China, guys, and it is uh, a really nice ambidextrous thumb stud knife with a ball bearing pivot. Now, let's just kind of go over. You've got this blue anodized uh, clip. It is tip up right hand only. You've got this awesome micro milling up here on uh, you know the chamfered parts. It's on both sides on the chamfered. Again, it, you end up with a rounded scale, even though it's flat here because you've got these chamfered areas. You do have your lock bar cut out here. You do have some really minor jimping uh, here and here. Whoa, I almost dropped the knife. Um, and a flat pivot and also a flat pivot. And you have a lock bar interface and over travel stop. Really, really cool. Now, uh, one thing I want to talk about before I go much further, you can see the tip of that blade comes right to the end of the knife. And I can't seem to do it right now, but the other day, yeah, see how close I am? I was able to contact the blade with my finger. Uh, I can't seem to do it right now, but it's something to be aware of. It comes very, very close uh, to the tip. You can see there, oh, there. Well, look how close I am there. Uh, really, really close, so be careful. Now, you do have uh, really nice barrel spacers, open construction, now, this knife feels very light in the hand, but there is no... Let me double check. No, there is. There is. There is. Uh, I, I, let me get my flashlight out here. Maybe you can see it on the low mode. So, yes, it does have uh, a lot of milling. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I said it didn't. Really nice uh, milled clip. Uh, good flex there. Good in and out of the pocket. Good clearance. No problems for me. Uh, you do have a beautiful Warncliffe blade with the asymmetrical logo, really nice ambidextrous thumb studs, S35VN, and I think that must be the model number. And I think this is a Dirk Pinkerton design. The funny thing is I can't find anything about that on um, uh, Beyond EDC's website or on SMKW or anywhere, but that, I believe, is Dirk Pinkerton's logo, that DP there. Uh, pretty, pretty sure, and that would make sense because this is gorgeous. This is a beautiful grind, uh, flat grind with a really, really beautiful uh, finish to it in that satin. You do have a really nice, uh, effective um, uh, sharpening choil there. I even like the geometry of it and a lot of jimping. So let's talk about that. Uh, so ge geometrically in your hands, this thing feels phenomenal. Uh, feels great because of that rounding and chamfering. You do have jimping all the way back here, jimping out here. Like I always say, I don't really need it, but I think it's effective. It's none, none of it's, it's a little sharp up here, 
but not super bad. Um, and it feels good once you're in place. You are not moving uh, in that case. Uh, there's nowhere to choke up, but you don't need it because it is a four-finger knife with a little bit left over. Great feeling, uh, you know, in the hand, okay? So let's talk about, oh, action. Uh, so, whoops. So thumb studs, really, really good. I can. Now, I won't be able to do it because I'm on camera. Of course not. Oh, you can't because I've got pressure on the lock bar. Uh, wait, what the heck? I just did this right before we came on camera. So hold on. We're going to do this again. We're going to do this. Okay. So it got really tight there. That was weird. So I don't know if I was doing something. So let's stay off the lock bar. Man, I am not kidding, guys. Let me not be in front of the camera. I cannot middle finger flick it. But I did earlier. I swear to you I did. Um, maybe we'll try it again in a little bit. I cannot do it. And I just did it about 20 minutes ago. It has a very, very... Uh, you know, very uh, stout detent. Uh, let's see. Yeah, very stout. And that might be exactly what we're dealing with, paired with a little bit of pressure on that lock bar. I have uh, fumble fingers, but again, it is fine coming out with the thumb, no issues whatsoever. And you can see it. It. <laughs> so again, I think I'm putting pressure on the lock bar uh, and that would be me. So now, uh, it drops very quickly. Uh, it is, and yeah, I'm putting that. It is totally me, guys. Um, I don't think it's the knife because I mean I haven't. Maybe just something about me wrapping my hands around the camera is causing me issues because I have not had. Try, I carried this all day today, and I I played with it at my office over and over again. Didn't have any problems with it. So please don't hold that against the knife. Matter of fact, let me do it back here for just a second. Uh, nope, doing the same thing. And I am doing exactly what I said. I'm putting pressure on the lock bar. So that's weird. Maybe just something about trying to actually focus on doing the review and I'm screwing up. But uh, it is not the knife. It is me. Uh, so again, good access to the lock bar. Uh, there's no kind of chamfering, but it's wide enough. And there is, um, you know, nice, easy push over there. So I don't, I don't think it's a problem whatsoever. There's no lock stick. No issue there. And I knocked Powdered Toast Man over. He's dead. Uh, we have about a 15 on the lockup. And again, it just wants to drop really, really nicely done. Now, let's do some comparisons. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, well, did I put my comparison knives away? I did. Because I wasn't going to do another review, and then I decided to. So let's get my comparison knives back out. Uh, so I'm not going to do these all the time, but I've been being asked about it a lot, so I'm going to try. There is the Rat 1 from Ontario, and here is the Rat 2. I don't have any Spider Co's anymore, hardly. I, I have the Manix 2, um, but I don't have a PM2 or a Para 3 anymore, so I thought these were good. So you can see there, it gives you a good, it's a, it's a smaller one. It's not a huge knife, uh, but it's a good size. So let's talk about specs real quick. Um... So, again, $182 at SMKW. Uh, they are in stock. It is made in China. 4.12 inches closed. Uh, satin finish. Um, thumb studs. And uh, has that sand color uh, to the titanium. S35VN steel. Um, it is a 3.25 inch Wardcliffe blade. 4.12 inch closed. And 7.37 inches overall. And are you not going to give me the weight? Are you really not going to give me the weight? That can't be true. Uh, really? All right, guess what I'm doing, guys? We're getting the scale out. Oh, I like getting the scale out. I don't want to get the scale out. But I have to because there's no weight on there. And you guys want to know what the weight is. So we're going to do that. 3.32 ounces. Uh, very, very nicely done in that regard. So you've got, again, uh, a 3.32 a ounce knife. Uh, that is 3.25 uh, inch blade. And that is really, really go good, as you know. So I am very excited about this knife. Again, I, I have carried it several times and I have not had trouble opening it. So I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. See, I'm behind the camera now. No problems. Let's see if I can middle finger flick it, not on the camera. No, I guess in that case, I am somewhere 
suddenly putting pressure on the lock bar because I was not having trouble with it, and now I am. But there you go. Uh, and again, by the way, cutting-wise, do I have another piece? Of, oh, this is my last piece of paper. i got to go get more. Uh, cutting-wise, uh, this thing is great. Now, uh, this is a pass-around knife, uh, so it's been to several other reviewers, and it doesn't seem to bother it. I love to kind of... There we go. So you can see there, it definitely wants to cut. And then if you want to get in there with that tip, again, I don't want to put it down on this part of my table, but that tip is great at piercing. Really good uh, thin blade here. As you can see, nice, nice, nicely done. Very, very good. I enjoyed this knife and I'm really glad I got to check it out. Now, this is already a little longer review than usual, so we're going to wrap it up. Um, really, really enjoyed it. And guys, please give me a comment below and let me know what you think of this one. Give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so, even though I'm crazy. And thanks so much for watching the Knives Fast channel.